Hi Year 11 and welcome to your lesson today on Ina Klein and that music, mainly focusing around wider listening, uh, which means listening to pieces from the same era, but potentially from different composers or from the same composer at the same time. Today you are going to need with you a piece of paper, a pen, and you are also going to have to have all those distractions out of the way. So please can I ask, please make sure phones are away, tablets, etc. Let's really focus for this 50 minutes. So in today's lesson, what you are going to be doing is you are going to be listening to a number of pieces from the classical era. Uh, please make sure that you have your emails open with you as well, because uh, you are going to use the template that I sent you last lesson as part of this. Uh, you're going to be able to confidently answer five questions on Ina Kleiner and just be able to recall how the instruments of the orchestra have changed over time. To so start with our do now. Just a little bit of recall today. So I'd like you to answer these following questions. So what is the structure of Ina Kleiner? When was the piece composed? Explain how the instruments are used throughout the piece. What time period is it from and when was it composed? Can you explain the dynamic journey of the piece? And Mozart had a very unique musical skill. What was it? I'd like you to pause the video now. Give yourself two or three minutes okay, and go through these six questions. OK, so just looking at the answers to these then. So the structure of Ina Kleiner, remember, it is in ternary form, so it is in A, B, A. But within that, there is also then a substructure of each section being in binary form. So remember, that means that it is A, B, A overall. And within each of those, it is also A, B. Please make sure that you do understand that because that's really quite important. Remember, the second and final A section overall there are no repeats. So if we were in an exam situation, it would be very evident that it was the final minuet rather than the minuet at the beginning because there are no repeats. The piece was composed in 1787. Explain how the instruments are used throughout the piece. Now the instruments, remember, we have the, uh, the violin one, violin two, the viola, the cello and bass part playing together. Often the violin one and the violin two part, remember, are doubled in octaves. That means that they play eight notes apart. Okay. The viola and the cello and bass part are very much accompanying. They very rarely do much else. It is there for that reason. Time period that this is from is the classical period and the dynamic journey of the piece. You have your scores in front of you. I just want you to double check your answer. And Mozart's unique skill? Well, guess what? He could learn anything by ear that he wanted to. Fantastic. If you've got all of those, please make sure that you just have a quick scan of your answers. Look through the score, just double check that you know exactly what you're focused on. So it's now time for you to own it. This means that you have some time to work some on independently on music theory. Now, that could be something that you need to work on. So it could be reading notes of the treble clef, but you might feel confident about that. So it could be actually reading notes of the bass or the alto clef or thinking about key signature identification or interval identification. I'd like you to pause the video now and spend six minutes on musictheory.net. Now it's time for you to think way, way back. On that piece of paper that I asked you to bring to the lesson, just section a little bit of it off. And on that piece of paper, I'd like you to own it and retrieve as much information as you possibly can, because I want you to brain dump everything that you can remember about how the orchestra has changed over time. So within that, remember, you should be discussing the Baroque period, the classical, the romantic and the 20th century. Could you add some key composers, dates, pieces you've listened to from this time period? Give yourself two minutes, pause the video now to really add to that brain dump. So moving on to our compare and contrast. Now, the reason for this is you need to be able to listen to a number of pieces from the classical period and be able to compare and contrast them to Ina Kleiner. This is something that will be looked at in your exam. So please make sure that you do feel confident with this. So. Use the template that I gave you in last lesson. You That is on your emails, remember. It is the Word document for unfamiliar listening, where it's piece one and piece two. I want you to listen to another piece of music from the classical era. That could be another piece from Mozart, or it could be another movement from Ina Kleiner. But you could just pick any piece of music from the classical era. And I want you to compare and contrast that with Ina Kleiner. 
Think about all the elements that we've discussed. You should be able to fill the Ina Kleiner box without even really listening to it. Try and do that now. Give yourself eight minutes, pause the video now and listen to another piece of music and compare and contrast it with Ina Kleiner. Remember, this only needs to be in bullet points. Pause now. So to finish off the main part of our lesson, what I want you to do is you've got two options now. So option one is to complete the focus on sound lesson that has been set for you. The website is there to support you if you need it. If you have any issues with regards to logging on, please email me. OK, but this is a by yourself activity. So try and do as much of it as you're on your own as you can. The second option is using the score that I gave you last lesson. Answer the following questions. Pause the video now and give yourself probably about seven minutes to complete as much of that as you can. Now, finally, our last thing that I would like us to do today is I'd like you to write down two things that you think have gone well and one thing that you think you could improve. Could you also potentially write five questions of your own for Ina Kleiner? Be really interesting to see those when we come back to school. And just a little challenge there for you. List as many composers of the classical era as you can. Can you then listen to a piece from each of them and then compare and contrast that to Ina Kleiner? I know that's going to take a while, but it's a really useful thing to do. If you have still got time at the end of that or you think that you just want to do something more musical, why don't you have a go at practicing that performance? End the video now. With any time that you have left, focus on the above tasks. Thank you for listening to Year 11 and I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.